my excited dance. We have a special guest today. Is it too far? It's farther than where I usually put it. I love this. This is my tripod and it is a music, music stand. stand. Very fitting for you. Yeah. We are a very, very high production quality enterprise. I have sunk hundreds of thousands of dollars into this hobby. Yes. I'm making millions. Yes. So, so you have to invest it back. Cheers. Cheers to you. <laughs> There's a lot of negative space above the head, is that okay? I mean, that's fine by me. Welcome. This is so exciting. We are, okay, I should introduce you, I guess. I'm sure you all know this lovely person, Biblio Sophie. And please do, <laughs> please do your version, my version of my title card, okay, wait. like the other night. It was pretty great. I think I need to, like, because I need it to be like ASMR. It needs to be like, Biblio Sophie. <laughs> Biblio Sophie. Biblio Sophie. I'm in New York with Ohad, and we obviously know each other from booktube because this is the cutest, coolest way to connect with people on the internet ever. Yeah. And you were so generous to let us stay with you in New York, so we're in a beautiful apartment in Brooklyn. So we're, we've been reading a couple of things in common accidentally and yeah. then on purpose. Yeah. Uh, one of those things is the fact that I, I guess uh, now two weeks ago, mm -hmm. read The Hard Crowd, and yes, what Ben is currently reading, so... Rachel so, Kushner. Rachel this is, there's going to be a lot of Rachel Kushner in this video. Lots of Rachel Kushner, because I picked up from the library The Mayor of Leipzig, which I basically only know about because of Rebecca. Of Rebecca, Rose. yeah. Absolutely. And it's so we it's it's truly a weird thing. I definitely want to talk about this with yeah. you because it is, it's tiny novella and I, what is it? We were on the subway and you started reading it. And so of course I'm, I was eyeing, <laughs> I was eyeing and I like trying to. to read, but also like, I wasn't sure what pace you're going to read on and if it's possible to read like parallel to you. Probably you could have. And you said it kind of reads like a picture book. I mean, yeah, because the text is really large also. Yeah. And it's this, these vignettes. Mm. Um, it's sort of like a series of non-events over the course of a working vacation. Yes. Uh, in Cologne. Yeah, in, in mostly Cologne and, and also in Leipzig for a little bit. Yeah. And it is an American visual artist mm -hmm. who is in Germany for... A couple of days uh probably like on a working vacation yeah she's like meeting with gallerists and curators she 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 has a show i finished it this morning <laughs> so Gosh. so that we could do this and it's a really fast read you can read it in like 45 minutes yeah i mean it's 80 pages I yeah think. so it's 80 pages of large text it is not 80 pages even it is 71 pages amazing it's published by a uh new york, new york. gallery New York Gallery. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's definitely like it's an. I think it is as much an art artifact mm -hmm. as it is like a story in yes. some ways. And yeah, she encounters. She's kind of going around with her um, gallerist slash friend. Yeah. And she kind of has some encounters with a couple of people. You mostly kind of blowhard men. Mm -hmm. um, the first. Uh, encounter that we hear about is that she's gone to see a talk by a sort of well-respected but like shitty um male artist yes who's, like, just is in love with uh, his, his own, own work yeah exactly like... the the stereotype of um the you know the artiste um mm -hmm. yes like, yes uh, you just you have to engage with my work, work. on my terms yes. <laughs> do you want to tell them who the mayor of Leipzig is. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> yeah, should I say? I don't know, it's your call. There's not that much plot. It's not like no. you can't pick up this book if you know exactly literally what happens. You know what, let's, let's leave it up for a I sec. think, yeah. Making comments about like, um, male, I got like male exhibitionist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Activities. Yes. Like that in art. Mm -hmm, exactly. in life, in sexuality, like in everything, and that's like really encapsulated in this one character, the mayor of Leipzig. 
And right. that's that's really why he deserves to. I mean, he's a tiny little thing. Yeah. But that's sort of why he deserves to be the the title. The title. Of this. Um, yeah, exactly. I think that's the perfect encapsulation. It is about um, sort of the work and the person mm. making the work yes. and who gets to be the work. Yes. Because there is also a very metafictional and like kind of art criticism, art history aspect to it. Um, she goes, I, I think probably my, one of my favorite things, uh, is her little foray into talking about the, like, representation, mm -hmm. like, l literally of a person in art and, like, what is... Yes. The person is not the, like, the character, it's yes. like a representation of it, and... Yes, it's um, like, if you make a painting... There is someone standing as a model for someone else. So the person that you see in the painting, is it the person? Mm -hmm. Is it a model of a person? If you don't see like the internal life or you don't know the internal life, is are you seeing yeah. it really? Or And yeah, so there's this sort of recursive thing that happens of uh, between gaze and mm. gazed upon and mm. also what is being represented in a piece of art mm -hmm. or in a piece of fiction also because yeah. of course there's this metafictional aspect to that yeah uh who who is being represented how is it who gets a voice to a certain extent mm. and who gets like a personality and yeah yeah what's the difference between being a man and a woman in yes. that trajectory to a certain extent very nas navel gazy yeah it must be said but in a good way i like um, that kind, kind of, of combo pack of art criticism essayistic contemplation of what it means to write and create mm. but also have relationships with art and like yes. consume art and consume other people's thoughts about mm. art there's a really good page about the artist talking about making a top 10 list for art for him. Oh, yes. I really, I, I took a picture of that. Yes, yeah, she really goes good. to a museum and because she did like an art forum top 10 list, she gets an art forum pass that's supposed to let her into any museum. And like, of course, this one doesn't let her in with this pass. And yeah, she speaks about like being edited and that no one wants to own up to the fact that like, they everybody's were, edited everyone's edited they they want to just be cool and like that's gonna be but all the artists that do these little lists they all sound the same because they're edited because they're the all yeah people. and so again like what is the voice and what is the representation yes. and even your personality because yes. the entire point of being asked to do a top 10 list is to milk the image that you have you reach a certain mm. level of like coolness and worthiness of respect mm. but then that gets totally uh, that gets put into the meat grinder of like the house style and it gets edited yes. to be not actually like mm. only nominally your list Yes, so the last thing or maybe the last thing the last thing I feel like I need to mention about this Yeah, uh, is that Rachel Kushner is also a character. Yes, I was gonna say <laughs> like That room okay the, on this page it says that reminds me of an email Rachel Kushner apparently got while she was working on this story so she is referred to Jeez. as this is in first person from the point of view of this female artist. Who's referring to Rachel Kushner. Who has written about her. Who has who written about her in this story? Or like, this is the yeah. story she wrote? Yeah, you and, know? and who can't know her really. Yeah. Even though it's her creation. So it's all, yeah. Yeah, it's like a lot what you said. There's a little bit of a um, ominous kind of, um, uncanny, creepy. Oh yes, aspect to this, there which is. I wasn't expecting, but I really love. Yeah, there's a like just a soupçon of like, um, like supernatural in Persian. Love. Yeah, an atmosphere like which I, I'm not sure what I think that that represents. Mm -hmm. Let's read it. Yeah, I think you it's, read it. it's really time. worth a read because it's going to take no time out of your life. <laughs> It'll take you about as long yeah. as we have been talking Honestly, about Honestly, if you just play this video in tandem, you will have finished it already. You, usually, you, know, you read a book and it takes you, I don't know, like 10 hours to read or whatever, or five, and then you think about it for about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And, and then you move it aside. Yeah. This Which still, is fine, but yeah. this, yeah, this is kind of on the other 
And it's a library. You did a library I with this library, one. Yeah. So you get a star for that. Thanks. So loved it. I'm reading The Hard Crowd. You finished it. Mm -hmm. I also, to speak about Rebecca again, <laughs> she ate this. Oh, she ate that one in the past, mm. which got me on Rachel Kushner as like a little sparkle in my brain looking out for her name. Mm -hmm. And then you read it mm -hmm. and I saw that you read it. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like, okay, pick it up, take it with you to New York. I could have taken any book to New York, but I took this one because I, of you. That, so. that seems like an appropriate book to bring to New yeah. York, honestly. So these are essays of Rachel Kushner from 2000, 2020. She also wrote more fiction. Yeah, she which you read, have here, but I have you... one of them, um, which I liked, and I read a fair bit ago. Oh, actually, uh, I read The Flamethrowers several years ago and liked it without like falling in love with it. Um, I tried reading The Mars Room earlier this and year, and was less successful. And I just it it's not it's not it's not my vibe. Um, it's too violent. Uh, it violent takes place. is not your vibe. Violent is not typically my vibe, and it takes place in a prison, and it just, it's a lot. Yeah, prison, I, I'm and not I mean, sure. And this it's... has a fair amount of violence, too, actually, which, so do her essays. Mm. Maybe even so does Mirror of Leipzig, actually. Yeah. I told you a couple of days ago, like, I, I picked up um, The Hard Crowd and read the first essay, which is um, Girl on a Bike or Girl on a Bicycle. Girl on a motorcycle. Motorcycle, probably. yeah. Which is referencing yeah. the name of a film. Yes, and it is about her like hanging out with biker racer, basically. Yeah, and uh, like a really um, questionable boyfriend at the time. Yeah, and it was very interesting. It's a great opening it is. salvo, basically, but also. I was just like, is especially it's called The Hard Crowd, mm. and I've read The Flamethrowers, which also has um, some similar themes. Okay. And so the problem that I have had with Rachel Kushner is that they're sort of a, like, not like the other girls, hard-edged um, thing yeah. that happened. And it's it's true, it's well-earned in mm. her, like, it's not a put-upon at all. Right. Uh, but I don't necessarily want to read about it sometimes. And also I think it's partially jealousy on my end. Right. I think I get like a little put off because mm. I get scared of, I get scared that non-femininity is performative anti-femininity. Um, one more time. Say it one more time. <laughs> non-femininity. Yes. Or, and like, uh, interacting with things that are very stereotypically masculine and like, being yes. the only girl in a bunch of yes. extremely male uh, places means that you're performing anti-femininity. Mm. And then I realized while reading The Hard Crowd that that's actually not what she's what doing. What she's doing. Which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah. I can understand not wanting to read a whole essay collection that each essay is just... About being the only about girl. being the only cool girl in yeah, the group. Yeah, exactly. You know, and like, to a certain extent, there's a fair amount of that. Yeah. But that's just that's that's her actual life. And it's giving some Didion mm -hmm. vibes. I mean, we're this is an homage photograph. No. I don't know. Is it? There. Yeah. There's a photo of Joan Didion in front of her car. I think with a cigarette like this in black and white. I think I can. And I think sure. that this is meant to. I would be unshocked her. by this. Uh, I'm gonna bring up something also that we already spoke about in the living room. Please. Which was I asked Sophie if you give yourself the permission when you're reading a collection. I don't have a problem to DNF a book if I don't like it or if I think it's just not right for me. But there's enough in here that I do like to want to read it. But then to skip an essay, I feel like I'm un something's unfinished or like like last loose ends are not sewed up. So I asked you if you allow yourself when you read an essay collection to skip essays. Absolutely. That you don't feel so much. And I had to do that now with one of these. So I, I like that you just do that. Yeah, absolutely. I Because I'll get stuck and then I'll just never read the rest it, of the book, which is a shame. It, it's a shame because there's... So, I really love... Actually, maybe my favorite essay in this is the title essay, which is the last one. The last one. That's also where her, well, she, where she starts to really 
talk about her own role as a person who is living in these sort of intense situations mm. around these very intense people. Yeah. And but it's always a little journalistic and and t- kind of to go back to Mayor of Leipzig, it, there is what is the role of the observer in all of this? Mm. And uh, there's a fantastic quotation in that essay, spoiler alert, uh, (laughs) in which he says, uh, to be an author is always to leave the party early. Yes. Yeah. I think Uh, I saw. I was the weak link, the mind always at some remove, watching myself and other people, absorbing the events of their lives and mine. To be hard is to let things roll off you, to live in the present, to not dwell or worry. And even though I stayed out late, was committed to the end, some part of me had left early. To become a writer is to have left early no matter what time you got home. And absolutely, love that. when you're living your life not exclusively in the moment mm. and always kind of thinking about the future of how you're going to tell it and mm. therefore putting that present already in the past, wow. it is this like insta melancholy nostalgia to a certain extent wow, I no can matter really relate to that yeah i mean i don't write so much so it's not exactly from that um aspect like to write something later but i really relate to that kind of wanting to have an experience and wanting to hold on to it yeah as opposed to just ex- like swimming in the experience i absolutely relate to that um so yeah that really that really made me fall in love with this or like wow. c- confirmed my love of this book actually yeah. which is a book that i had started several months ago i read the first essay and listened to the first essay it's when i had covid not mm. to brag <laughs> but i've listened to rachel kushner also reads these i uh, like her voice i like her voice too I, and a lot of people do yeah it was, it was, she's got like a little slur to mm. it actually um and it's nice to hear an author recount we, their own yeah especially if it's essays like that yeah you know who is terrible at reading her own stuff <laughs> rebecca solnit i i hate never her I, voice i'm so sorry <laughs> actually no her voice is perfectly lovely but it's really stilted i only t- mm. tried one audiobook i'm sorry i'm sorry we're i know she's i know she is a huge i uh, have the feel of dying to what is it? Getting lost? Yes. I like her essays a lot. This is uh, some it's read. funny because this is somebody whose voice on the page I really like. Mm. Um but yeah, I, I tried listening to one audiobook of hers and I've almost never been successful with an audiobook. I mean, look, I obviously am going to have thoughts on that because I use my voice to for my livelihood. So. Yes. Yeah, so that you you get to be picky also about what kind of voice you want to listen to. Yeah, I'm a I'm an opera singer. If you don't know this. No? Oh, one of my favorites so far was in the company of truckers. I love she that one. She pulls over her car and it's like it's not working or something, and just the kind of like small, little microcosm culture of the people that are living in a rest stop almost. Basically, like, yeah helping her in the rain to recover the car and just this like human kindness in the most um what to me would feel like the most intimidating terrifying yeah experience for someone to actually be so kind i just like i thought it was such a sweet i it that one doesn't even feel like an essay it feels like a short short story i do recommend the flamethrowers it takes place in um like the meatpacking district before it got cool. And so it's in the, it's Mm. still in the like... Chelsea, it's in Chelsea. Yeah, it's like Chelsea, Soho, 70s, um, art world. Yeah, the kind of like... I could like that. Chelsea Piers and... um, Yeah, I I do recommend it. Okay, I have two questions I want to ask you as a guest on the Uh channel. uh Because now this is my talk show with you. Yes. So... No one's favorite question is, what is your favorite book? So I won't ask you that. But I will ask you, like, three to five books that you love right now. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. Because that changes, I think. Absolutely. Like, you did not warn me. No, I, that was um, the point. Well, if you want to embarrass <laughs> me. <laughs> I cannot. Sabotage. 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 Sabotage.
sabotage. I love books about reading and writing yes. and that are they could I love essay collections, I love words, I love books about words. Um so some things that recently I have really loved. Okay, so some things recently I've liked a lot. Yeah, that's that's a good one. That's such a good one. As we know, I loved this and Carson autobiography of Red. I need to read the second one. Have you read The Door? Yes, I really like I'm The reading, Door. I'm reading it and I brought it with me also. Oh, nice. I really like The Door. I'm really on a Zabo kick. Oh. Opening. Ooh, introduction by Ali Smith. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Ali Smith. Thank you. I like her. I love Ali Smith. I also would love to read Crudo, Olivia Lang. Ah, I love, you didn't like I it? love Olivia Lang. I didn't dislike yeah, okay. it, You're but not that's the, not that's not your You're not the first person to say that. That's not like yeah. So um some recent faves. Oh actually. Why not? Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Um, which is, has no cover on it, so hey. So you you can make up whatever <laughs> make it is. Up, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of Toni Morrison. Actually, I just right. started um, Tar Baby like mm. this very morning. Uh, this is the bluest eye. I could have picked really any number of wow, others. This is beautiful. But the bluest mm. eye is really gorgeous. Uh, and this is gonna go with my theme of like storytelling also. So the the act of storytelling is sort of a fictional or is it is a component of the fiction of this book to a certain extent right and it is it's not just a means of telling a story but it is also a means of really kind of creating the story yes. in the very um from the very like fabric thereof and like um, wishing to recreate mm -hmm. oneself looking at other Exactly. Like attributes, physical and non-physical, that you wish to have, and through fiction you can, I guess, make yourself mm -hmm. into whatever you... Yeah, and, and what people around you um, have, how they manipulate your story and therefore kind of fate you to something. Oh, yes. Um, you know, if you, are, if you are a certain character mm. um, in this town, this family is, you know, like the kind of the scapegoats of everybody else's darkest thoughts. And it is, is it because the town is describing a fucked up family or is the family partially fucked up because they've been fated by, by the scapegoating wow. of everybody else? Wow. Uh, Ali Smith is a total fave of mine. Mm, I always recommend How to Be Both as an opening. I haven't read um, it. It's so beautiful. I haven't read and it, it has a lot of the themes that, and the ways in which she writes. Mm -hmm. uh, again, like, there's always a little bit of supernatural, actually. Um, I like she that. She likes ghosts. And, she does. And it's also because, like, what are you doing when you're telling a story? I think the ghost is this realization of what an author is doing and mm. she, there's a way in which she has conversations with her authorial self as a sort of ghost and i really recommend also artful which is a series of four essays um that really really okay i can't have wait. that and a lot of like art theory and cultural criticism she blends just like everything i want in exactly book. uh in the ali smith vein olivia lang is somebody that i totally adore mm. i don't i don't super recommend her novel it's actually like it is like all of her other works actually so okay. it is in some ways as good but it doesn't really hit or didn't hit me the same way. Right. Probably if you're gonna have an introductory um, Olivia Lang, I recommend uh, Funny Weather because it has yeah. oh, a huge so good. overview. Um, or The Lonely City. Lonely City is so good. Okay, I, I, that's next on my list. Good. Uh, ben Lerner, 1004, mm, which is... I don't know this one. Um, this is the second of his trilogy of extremely auto-fictional books. Okay. Uh, the first one is Leaving the Atacha Station, and the one that came out most recently is The Topeka School. The, is that the third one? That's the third one. You also have that here. Yeah, I have yeah. all of them. I like all of them, but this one is the nicest mm. to me. Um, it takes place in, like, it takes place in Prospect Park, basically. Okay. So it's, right there's door. a weird, uh, uncanny thing about that, sure. but it's so much about 
writing, the act of writing, the act of growing up, the act mm. of remembering. Um, it's really beautiful. Okay. Uh, I also recommend uh, his um, like long essay, book length essay, The Hatred of Poetry. If you're trying mm. to get into poetry and you're afraid, I really recommend that. But this is my favorite of his novels. I'm sold. Strangers I Know by Claudia Durastanti. Mm -hmm. And I love this book. Um, it is, I guess it's technically a novel, because that's why the Fitzcarraldo edition it's blue. is blue. Right. Um, it is, but it's very auto-fictional, and it's so, so much about communication and language. and Women in translation. Women in translation. The translation is by... Elizabeth Harris. Elizabeth Harris. And it's it's beautiful. Actually, I really recommend the audiobook of this one as well. Okay. Um, she reads it? No. No, a friend of mine reads it, actually. Really? Yeah. And it's wow. really good. Um... And yeah, I listened to it and then I bought the book because I really Amazing. wanted to um, interact with the language of it and the kind of the, the concepts of it. So a lot of people are pretty cold on this, but oh. I love this book. So like her parents are deaf? Yes, both of her parents are deaf, which is actually the case. And then um, she is Italian, but also grew up a little bit in Brooklyn mm. sometimes and so like a lot of code switching between different languages um, mm. and different languages within like, even the same technical language like um, Italian from a deaf person's point of view, Italian from a poor person's point of view, wow. from like a suburban point of view, a lot of um, class uh, and Kind of being on the margins. Wow. Uh, so I really I've love heard that. a lot about that. Sorry, A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. Oh, Amy's Lassie. gonna be so happy. I love she this. loves this book. I love this book. I read it a little while ago, like uh, early, yeah, I read it early 2021, and I love this. this is a series of essays about um, being queer, about being indigenous. Mm. Um, the author is Canadian. It, but it's also so much about telling your story and uh it's extremely academic which okay. i love uh and i love a book that makes me want to read a bunch of other yeah. books someone rem um said it kind of is like reading maggie nelson there's that yeah it's like yeah a that lot you, of, it sends you a lot into like yeah. some a lot of references yeah. uh a lot of critical theory cool um I might read that while I'm here in the next day. You should. Day. It's slim. And you yeah. don't have to read all of the essays, too. So <laughs> You don't. <laughs> the theme, if you take anything exactly. from this. He's young also. No? Yeah. But again, a lot of interaction, intersection, I guess, of language and, um, like, language and theory and self. This is long, so I'll ask you one more question. I don't mind a long video either, so get your tea. Also, I'm sure there will be some editing of me I could only hope there's editing out of me, uh, like searching for my books. But Maybe you... not. Oh, searching now? <laughs> yeah. I think that that's the only thing that's not gonna get cut. <laughs> <laughs> you are a French speaker. I am. If you don't know, first of all, you need to watch her channel. That's a given. Yes, okay? I'm great. So we're gonna put it everywhere so you, that you don't miss it. Um, these are all the these are all the links. French would be your first language, mm -hmm. and I remember asking you this on Instagram really in the beginning, which was if I wanted to start reading French authors. So maybe this is a double question. One is like, who is like one of your favorite French authors, and the other one is like a place to start. Uh, are we looking for? Um, Contemporary. Mm, does it need to be? I mean, the Annie Arnaud yeah. popularity Love. is, I think, well, one that is well deserved. I like her and. Um, a man's place and a woman's place. Also I forgot what they're The one about English. the mother and the father you yeah. said are great. One is from, I think, 1984 and one is published in 1987. The English, or the French titles, excuse me, are La Place, that's about her father and uh, the one about her mother is une femme. Um, mm. L'événement, which is happening? Happening. Uh, I also really recommend it. I think those are my three recommend, like top recommendations. Um, and yeah, you also get like a good sense of a specific slice of French life as well. Right. 
Um, which is nice when you read yeah. people from other yeah. places, like you want also. And you know, that. it's a very yeah. it's like it is a white countryside version sure. of like a universal experience. Right. But still, there are a lot of, especially with those two books about her parents, there are a lot of very universal mm. kind of familial relationships and a lot to do with class as well and, yeah. and I got education. that from mo most of her books that yeah. I've read. It's like a lot about it's that's very present. It's extremely present. So I think that's really interesting. Um uh Leila Slimani, I think, is a fantastic mm. uh, author. Uh, she's most famous for Chanson Douce, which is the perfect nanny in English. Yeah. And there's another, there are two English titles. I forgot what the other one is. Um, and that has a lot to do about, like, xenophobia, racism, class, mm. um, misogyny. Muriel Barberi was a really, the elegance of the hedgehog was really really popular a few years ago um it's and it's lovely okay it is really lovely and it is about a girl who loves to read so oh well i really recommend it <laughs> and yes. it takes place in paris and you get a lot of um the vision of paris you know also who's really good flaubert read flaubert yeah okay. read madame bovary Quite yes. honestly, I want to reread it. Like, I haven't oh, read, I wrote it. read it. it oh, I wrote it. Oh my god, your Just, partner by is, the way, it's so bad. Just, those are a few. Those are Love a few that. white and not white ladies. <laughs> <laughs> that's a. That's good. That was good. Yeah, I have therapy now, so okay. I need to. Yeah, therapy is so important, and reading is great. Also, I hope I was really that much taller than you. Um, the fun thing is that. Is that not. I'm not. <laughs> we met and she said, you're short, shorter than I thought you were. Thank you for watching the Men and Selfie Show. <laughs> we'll be working on uh, the theme song. Bye.